It's been very chilly this week. We're back in the 20s again this morning. The warm's up pretty nice. It's going up in the upper 40s, right around 50 or so. Uh, Blake will be here in just a minute. And before he gets here, I'm going to sharpen a uh, pole saw and probably that 550 right there. Get this sharpened up. Yeah, this is what it looks like this morning. We got a giant pile there, another one there. Dug up all these trees down to this water oak. And then got another giant pile right there in the corner. It's cleaning up well. So me and Blake's about to get after it. Again this morning we've uh, come on up around this side over here. Got to right there. You gotta go on down through there.
what he's going to do here is everything had been cross-fenced off years ago, probably back in the 30s and 40s, something like that. Judging by the old boat art fence posts that were on the property and these hedgerows, man, had started growing up on these fences and they just got wider and wider over the years and to the point where just lost a lot of acreage on it. And so he, the property owner now wants it all kind of either in one big field or two good sized fields. So we're going to work on it and get, get all of it done. One thing that oftentimes people don't really realize whether it's doing clearing or it's doing tree work, tree removal is the amount of debris that ends up coming from the job. And I often tell people a lot of times, you know, I price these jobs and are like, man, that's, that's kind of high. And I said, well, you know, you, you're not really understanding how much debris is up there in the air. And I'll tell them a lot of times that uh, whatever you figure is up there, multiply it times about three, because that's what the reality of it is. And when you start moving that stuff, piling it, stacking it to be burnt or hauling it one of the two, it costs a lot of money. Uh, piling it, burning it like this is your cheapest uh, avenue to go down to, to get rid of it uh, because when you start say chipping it or if you have to haul it whole and you can't get a lot of this stuff in the you know in dump trucks and dump trailers and what have you and then you got expenses going up and down the road probably will come back here I don't know in uh, a couple of weeks or so and and start some of these piles on fire and get them burnt because what he's going to do is once it's done is take and he's got a really heavy disc. He's got a big tractor and he'll run these rows down through there where I've taken everything up, cut them in. And he's got a SVL 97 uh, Kubota and with a root rate and he'll come down through there and anything that's left, uh, small root, stuff like that, he'll get them cleaned up like that and disc it all in and then you know, he'll have him a feel when he's mowing his hay where he can uh, where he can just roll through there with a tractor and won't have to be going through all these little old narrow holes and fence lines and all that stuff like that. One cool thing about it is uh, he and his wife have went through here ahead of me and have taken up all the barbed wire. They left the post. I've pulled them up as I've come to them, got them out for them, and then they come by, I'll pile them up, and they'll come by and pick them up later. Hope y'all enjoyed that. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.